Hello, I'd like to tell you a bit about probability generating functions. Take any random variable x which takes non-negative integer values. For the purposes of this video, all random variables will take on exclusively non-negative values. Its probability generating function is the power series formed by taking the kth coefficient to be the probability that x equals k. It's not hard to see that we can rewrite this as the expectation of s to the x. Note that by the assumption that x is a random variable, we have g of 1 equals 1, so that by theorems of analysis, we have that the radius of convergence of this power series is at least 1. In particular, we have that g is differentiable term by term infinitely many times within the disk of radius 1 around the origin. This means we can recover the probability mass function of a random variable through its probability generating function by differentiating g at the origin to extract the coefficients. In other words, a non-negative integer random variable corresponds precisely with its generating function. You may ask why we would want to have such a notion of a function in the first place. Well, it turns out that these generating functions have some nice properties that allow us to answer questions about random variables that would otherwise be quite tricky. In fact, if we were to have our generating functions in a nice enough form, we can immediately answer questions about our random variable without even having to convert it back into a random variable. For example, it's not hard to show that through a little bit of algebraic fiddling that the expectation of x is the derivative of g evaluated at 1, and there's a similarly but slightly more complicated formula for variance that you can find using the generating function. So, as a first result, we have that the generating function of x plus y is equal to the product of the generating function of x times the generating function of y if x and y are independent. Although we might have already been able to compute the expectation of the sum of two random variables without considering generating functions, this provides us a venue for computing individual probabilities of getting certain values. A second, perhaps more surprising, result is that if we consider a sequence of iid random variables xi with probability generating function gx and a random variable n with probability generating function gn, then the probability generating function of the sum of the xi's from i equals 1 to i equals n is the composition of g of n with g of x. Now, I know you may be a bit dazed now. What on earth does it mean to take the composition of two generating functions? I thought we were just encoding these random variables in s, but now we're plugging generating functions within generating functions? Well, hold on. I know I was a bit mystified when I first saw this, but the maths really does check out. Let's have a look at an example of where this kind of stuff is useful, which might ground some of the abstract material we've been covering. Branching processes. We'll consider an example of what's called a branching process. Specifically, we'll consider a model where we have a population that lives within a certain unit of time before dying off and giving offspring under a certain IID distribution for each member of the population. If we denote by xn the population at unit time n, and we denote by cni the number of offspring given by the ith individual in the nth generation, we can write that xn plus 1 is the sum of the cni's over i. By assumption, the cni's are iid, so that we can let g be the probability generating function of the offspring of a single member. Let us denote by gn the probability generating function of xn. We know that xn plus 1 is just the sum of xn iid random variables representing the offspring of individual members, so we can just write gn plus 1s equals gn gs using our previous result. Moreover, by induction and reshuffling the g's, we've got gn plus 1 of s equals g gn of s, so gn was just the nth power of g all along. With a little bit of algebra and chain rule, we've actually found that the expected population at the nth generation is just the nth power of the expected number of offspring given by a single member. Perhaps the most natural question to ask about a branching process is, what is the probability that population goes extinct given we have initially one member? Let Q be the probability the population dies out. We condition on the number of offspring of the first member. Supposing patient 0 has k offspring, the whole population dies out if and only if the k subpopulations also die out. Since the families are independent, these k families die out with probability q to the k. We thus have q equals the sum over k from k equals 0 to infinity of q to the k times the probability that x1 equals k, which is just g evaluated at q. So we have to solve the equation q equals g of q. Now, q equals 1 is a solution of this equation. If it were the only one, it would mean that all populations die out eventually, which doesn't seem quite right. 
Let's see what happens if we assume an arbitrary non-negative solution x. Now, Q is just the probability of the union of the events of sequences of families which eventually tend to naught, or in other words, gn of naught as n tends to infinity. It turns out that with a simple induction, and using the fact that g is increasing between naught and 1 inclusive, we get that gn naught is less than or equal to x for all x. Taking the limit yields q is less than or equal to x. We have thus shown that q is precisely the smallest non-negative root of the equation g of x equals x. Now, if mu is the expected number of offspring of a single member, we have that q equals 1 if and only if mu is less than or equal to 1. The case mu is less than 1 is straightforward using our previous result. By looking at the power series coefficients, we can deduce that g is convex. Note also that the slope of g at 1 is precisely mu, so that we can deduce that x equals g of x has a root smaller than 1 precisely when mu is greater than 1 by looking at g's graph. In summary, we found that probability generating functions allow us to study some random variables in terms of the power series using the tools of analysis. And as a moral, generating functions show up in other areas of mathematics. Probability theory just happens to be a field where the applications have been well studied. I hope you've enjoyed coming along on this journey with me. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.